Hey, Damon, Black Warrior Lures. So, possible catfish lure. One of the things I've heard on the forum somewhere, I guess probably on Catfish One, someone's asking, you know, lures for catfish, you know. I remember reading through some of the uh, in fisherman literature, the books and whatnot. There's definitely a section, I think it's in book three. There's at least one section on guys who are using fly fishing. There's a whole bunch of lures and things. And a lot of those lures come from like either adaptations of what are used in other places like walleye fishing and definitely fly fishing because, you know, catfish eat bait fish. They eat shad. So any shad pattern or bait fish pattern would be fresh game, right? Um, what do you think? I don't know. Uh, you guys have seen me use these tip rigs or whatever we're calling them. I've been working on a modified version on it, and this is smaller. You know, a lot of people say, that, oh, those hooks are too small for catfish. No, they aren't. They, they do fine. But I know a lot of people prefer larger hooks, and I made some in a larger size. These are like three-out hooks. That's a nice average size for catfish. I know a lot of you guys are wanting to do trophy fish. You want to see a 10-out, but, but you can see the difference in the size, and you see how it can be scaled. Here's what I'm... I've been working on this for a while. Uh, I designed this tandem rig a couple of years ago just for trolling for in my other, uh, you've seen some of my trolling videos when I first started. Uh, I think my first video on YouTube was, uh, was how I did my trolling rig. I may put a link to that. Just let me know if I forget. I never figured out that I could actually just take the basic rig and use that as sort of a bait harness and use that as that's what's the magic of it so I said well what can we do to just strip everything down to its bare bones parts which is basically you got two hooks linked with 50 pound test monofilament lashed on and held on with super glue I've never had this separate no matter how big a catfish I catch this has never broken I've never had it break okay so the question is how can we make it better because we were just using it as just as a bait. So as you can see, the first thing I had was some beads on it. Say so maybe we put some small beads on there, you know. It makes a little noise, but not a lot. Not like a rattle. Well the next thing is I went from four millimeter beads to six millimeter beads. So a little bit louder, but definitely bigger, you know, much more of a visual. You can see the difference right much bigger beads you know and the second thing is I added crystal flash here to the bottom and that's just pearlescent and I think you know these fish don't you know if you've ever looked at much fly fishing and you'll see somebody tie up a you know whatever damsel fly pattern or they'll tie up a you know whatever you know <laughs> you know, some sort of a nymph or something, you think, that doesn't look like a nymph, that doesn't look like a, what, it just looks like a, there's patches, that's a dog, <laughs> it's actually a pretty cool little sheep dog, I call them patches, because you got patches of white and stuff, he's all grown up now, he was coming over here as a puppy not too long ago, now he's all grown up, thinks he owns the whole block, <laughs> he's barking at me most of the time, <laughs> but anyway, the idea is that this simulates scales and this simulates the white. It's just, you're just adding a little bit more. So here we have our rod here. And what I'm going to do is, um, we've got damn cars coming. They always ruin everything. You have thought flowing and you get all self-conscious. You know, I'm real, a lot of people say, damn, you sound like a real cool guy to hang out with. Well, I'm really kind of like a hermit, you know. I get real nervous when I'm around people and I just don't. You know, I could hardly have a conversation with you if we were talking live face to face. <laughs> and so whenever cars get like that, I kind of go back into my shell. See, there's Patches barking at the car. See, he didn't mess with me because he heard me talking. I think he knows we have a you know, mutual understanding. I don't mess with him. He don't mess with me. So we're good. Every now and again, he'll forget his place and I have to put him back down. So... <laughs> I didn't have that super glue, so it's coming loose now. But but you see the idea. So what we do is I put this in through the bottom. This is eight pound line. Uh, 
the reason I go with number two and number four hooks is that it's a pretty common size among steelhead fishermen. But here's my thing, is that this becomes sort of a bait harness, not just a lure, but an actual bait uh, harness. Oh, come on. It seems like it always is doing something wrong. Okay, so we put that through there like that. And then what you're going to do is you'll take a piece of your liver, just like uh, is it cured livers, just like what the uh, salmon and steelhead guys would do with their row. And guess what? There you have it. That piece of liver is not coming off. And it's cured. It's, it's good to go. It's hard. And if push comes to shove, we can always add a second piece of liver here. You know, just thumb size piece, you know, nothing fancy, just, just like that. And you guys have seen me use it, and you've seen me catch fish with it. I'm trying to, again, I'm just trying to develop it more and more. And so that dangles there. Let's see if we can't get it. It tends to want to hook up on itself every now and again, we, we, the way the line works. Again, we still got to get the boat off the trailer and get it to get the bunks fixed before we can get back out on the water. But you see how that's running, right? Look at that. Look at that. I mean, you've got cured meat on there, blood, sugar, salt, borax to cure it, harden it, salt, sugar to harden it, cure it. Won't. But look, look at all that visual attraction there. I mean, you can see that white in there. You can see that. Um, yeah, as we're just, just simulating drifting along the river here, and it's always going to catch up here on all these weeds. It always does that, just the way it's made, because the river bottom here is very rocky. So let's get over here to the pebble part of the driveway. And so we pitch that out. And again, if we were drifting, we would just loosen up the drag here and just peel off drag and just like that, right? Set the drag to you know, whatever you want it. But as you can see, that just that's how it works. You're just dangling down like that, and they will come hit that. And there's all kinds of vid. You got the red there, you got the blood, you got the sugar, you got the salt, and you have the white beads and the and the uh, crystal flash. They call crystal flash in fly fishing circles, just refracting light. So that in itself is going to attract pe cats. And then my guess is that they'll hit the livers. I'm having good success with this combination on uh, below uh, Bankhead or whatever. And these cured liver recipe that you saw, if you haven't seen the cured liver recipe, check that out. But this is the rig I plan on using essentially the whole season, just about. It's working. Um, and so uh, let me know what you guys think about that. I mean, it, it's sort of a combination of a of a hair rig meets a meets a walleye rig meets a you know crawler harness meets a a uh, see that kind of fell off there but we just didn't quite have it on all that well um, it, uh, meets an egg loop you know from steelhead it's sort of a combination of a bunch of things and you got a little pieces of meat on there but you got this big old presentation a lot of visual and You have all that sound, you know. Sound, visual, smell. I just think it's going to be a killer combination. I mean, what do you guys think? You guys have seen me use sort of prototype versions of it on the river before, but I'm just hoping we can I can refine it even more uh, to to catch more fish. And my goal for this year is really eating size fish more than anything. And uh, there's more cars, which makes me nervous. But anyway, that's the that's the deal. And it uses J hooks. The fish hook themselves. Uh, so you're just taking a J hook and really getting the most you can out of it. And again, you can just that's just hooked in there, just like an egg knot, and it just doesn't come out, you know. And so, bam, there you go. And um, oop, 
We'll just pull that out. It's almost thick like leather, you know. And uh, they really seem to like that combo. So, what do you think? What do you think? You know, comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what you think. You know, seriously. I mean, I'm. You know, if you hadn't tried that lure uh, recipe, that uh, you need to try it. You know, working for me. It's working for me, and I've got pretty difficult conditions. Deep, clear water. Again, remember, these livers here. They've been sitting in here since Christmas, before Christmas. Here we are. It's a month later and it smells sweet almost good enough to eat you know i won't eat it but it's been sitting out here all that time you've seen that look at that just just no rot no rust it's just you know and it's what 50 degrees out here now 40 maybe now these aren't hardened and leathered like the other one you saw but we could do that very easily i'm probably going to just keep those out here I got plenty of livers like that and no and so there you go see ya black water tip rig fly rod setup drifting dragon fly trolling fly drifting whatever bait good times let me know what you think and I'll talk to you guys later